Hey everybody, this is Tracy Panace with Just Between Friends and we're going to show you how simple it is to clean up and cash in on all of that closet chaos that you have in your house. Four steps to cleaning up and cashing in. Collect, prep, price, and drop off. In collecting your stuff, you want to make sure they're clean, complete, and current. So scour every area of your home. The obvious place is your kid's closet. And by current, we mean current season. We have a fall winter sale and you're looking for clothing that your kiddo would wear between September and April. And then our spring summer event are things that your child would typically wear between April and September. So these are examples of some things that would be perfect for our fall winter sale. It's heavier weight of fabric, different materials like corduroy, jackets, and all of the things that we would wear with cooler weather. Also look in your baby's nursery. If you're looking for things like bumpos, uh, pack and plays, all of those things that your child has outgrown, as well as shoes and other items, um, toys, books, pajamas, and then don't forget about baby gear, such as this little activity table, the kitchen has items that you can sell as well, so these are feeding items, and then go to the family room and check out all those DVDs or video games and entertainment items. Those can all be sold as well. It's for complete. Your items need to be free of recalls. Anything that has been defective or damaged is ineligible for sale. Take the time to open the cases of your DVDs to make sure that the DVDs are there. If you're selling books, all the pages need to be in the books. If you're selling toys and they, if they require any sort of batteries or any special parts for operation, those all must be included as well. The second part of collecting your items is collecting your supplies. And chances are you have most of these things in your home. You just wanna bring them all together so that when you have the time to tag, you have the tools necessary to do the job. So you wanna gather up um, some Ziploc bags. You can use the gallon bags, the smaller bags, as well as any of the larger size in case you have bigger toys. You'll need safety pins for uh, clothing items and we recommend the two inch safety pins. It's a good idea to have rubber bands on hand as well as clear packing tape. Painter's tape is perfect for books. Zip ties or spray, string is what you're going to use for your shoes. And then you'll also need white cardstock. We recommend 60 pound or higher. You don't want it to be too thick because that will jam your printer, but between 60 and 70 pounds is ideal. Uh, scissors as well as a hole punch and then to clean your items you can use some Clorox wipes or if you have magic erasers those types of things work really well and then finally you will also need hangers so for children's sizes size six and under we recommend kid size hangers they can be wire or plastic and then for your bigger sizes size six and up you'll need to use an adult hanger again wire or plastic is fine then two optional things that you can have on hand, which can save you time. One is a paper cutter, and then secondly is a tagging gun. All right, so step two is prep, and we're gonna get everything ready so that it can be tagged. Clothing, as we mentioned, can go on a wire or plastic hanger, so you're looking for sets. This pajama set, perfect. We would put this on a hanger, and you can place this on a children's size hanger because it's size five and under. We can hang the bottoms with safety pins to the back, or you could place this, the pants on first, attach them with safety pins to the top bar, and then just simply place the shirt over the top, whichever you prefer. You're also gonna be looking for things that go together. So this is simple sorting. You know, all of these feeding items, they can be sold as a set. So put those all together in a Ziploc bag. It's also a good opportunity for you to, once again, review the condition of your items. So take a moment to clean this up with some Clorox wipes or with a magic eraser. The better your items look, the more you're gonna be able to earn on each additional item. 
We've gathered and we've prepped and now we're ready to price. And to do that, you simply log into the JBF website. In the upper right hand corner of the site, you'll see a link that says my profile. Okay, so we have gathered our items and now we are ready to print our price tickets. And to do that, we're going to log into the JBF website and I'm at the sale specific subsite. So this is westernmainline.jbfsale.com. You can also just go to jbfsale.com and you're going to go to the upper right hand corner and click login. You'll be prompted to sign in using your username and your password. And then you'll see these are all the sales that I am signed up to participate in. You, you need to make sure that you're actually signed up to consign. So you can see for Reading, I am not signed up to consign. So I want to do that because your inventory is not pointed to the sale unless you are signed up to consign. So even if you've participated for five years, you, every single season, you need to re-register. Okay, so now I'm ready and I'm going to go to the tagging site. and you will see a screen that looks like this. So on the left-hand side of the screen, these are your options. Um, you can see all your tags, which is where we're at right now. I have 366 tags in my account. I can create tags, which we're going to do next. Print tags, which is the final thing that we'll do. You can view reports. So during the sale, you can look to see what items have sold. All sales are updated in real time, so you can get updates as things are scanned throughout the sale. You can establish a profile. So if this is the first time that you've been in the system, it's a good idea to do that. To set your user defaults, and you have two choices, you can reduce your items, which means on the last day of the sale, your items that are marked reduce will be sold at 50% off. And then you can choose or not choose to donate. If you do choose to donate, you will receive a receipt with your check um, that can be used for tax purposes. And in reports, you can print a report of all of your items that have been donated to charity and what the dollar amount is. And then recalls, this will take you directly to the Consumer Safety Products Board website so you can check to make sure that your items are safe and eligible for resale. And then finally, the help. Um, tab here is where you can go to get additional support. Frequently asked questions can be found there. So we're going to go up here and we're going to go to create tags. And you can see there's two options. You may either do basic entry, which means that you've got just a whole bunch of random stuff. So maybe you have a book, a game, a toy. There's really no rhyme or reason. So in that case, I would choose basic entry. Rapid entry is a really good feature and can save you tons of time, particularly when you're tagging clothing. So this is if you have things grouped by category. So you've got all your boys clothing, all your girls clothing, all your toys, your books. Um, so things have kind of some sort of a rhythm to them. And with clothing, it's not only good to sort it by gender, but also by size. So we're going to do rapid entry. And if you forget what rapid entry is, there's a little description up here at the top. The first thing we do is we select our season. If I can get my screen. Okay, so this is fall, winter, and then our category. So let's just assume we have girls clothing and you can see all 10 fields have populated with girls clothing. The same thing will happen with size. So we've got all 12 months clothing here. And now I've just saved myself 20 keystrokes by having my stuff sorted by size and gender. It not only saves you time here in the tagging site, it's also going to save you time at drop off if you keep those items organized. When you go to do your description, you always want to lead with the brand. So we're going to say Gymboree pink, some sort of descriptive color or something that describes the item to the buyer as well as to our staff. So if the tag would become detached from the items, we can match it back up. So it's a uh, pink, a gibbery pink sweater with matching tights. Okay. 
The next field is the price. Prices are set in 50 cent increments, so you want to do $3, $3.50, $4, etc. We do not have a minimum price rule at the sales in Oaks, Reading, Lancaster, or Lower Bucks. Some JBF sales require $3 for items to be hung, so it's a minimum price point of $3. That is not the case for our sales, so if you want to price like a Circo brand something or a play clothes, something that really isn't quite worth $3, feel free to do so. Let's just say this is $4. Okay, you can see my defaults are set to reduce and donate, but perhaps I decided mm, I don't really want to reduce this Gymboree pink sweater. So I can uncheck that button and then go on to the next one. So the next one is a gap. Uh, denim jeans. Whoops. With flower accents. So anything that just helps the uh, seller to identify with the item, it's also going to help our staff, as I said, in case the tag is detached. So, so let's say the jeans, we're going to price those at $4.50. And for these, I decided I, I still um, want to reduce it, but um, I don't want to donate it. Okay. And then I would move on to my next one. So maybe the next one is uh, Old Navy, Blue Pants, Matching Top. Okay, and hit the tab button. That one I'm going to do $4.52. Let's say I have two of this Old Navy uh, blue pants with matching tops. They're exactly the same. I got them on sale. I you know, never used it. I can change my quantity here to two. And that's automatically going to create two tags for me. Let's just assume this is all the girls clothing I have. So I had set this up to print 10 tags of girls clothing. But if the next item in my pile is actually boys clothing, I can enter that, it's gonna change it. I can do the same thing with the uh, size and then it'll change it. So it's still saving you time um, to, to do that, but don't feel like you're locked in to, it all has to be girls 12 month clothing. Okay, you wanna save often because the system will time out and you can save in the top right or the bottom left and then it'll take you back to your screen. So this, is color coded. This shows me these are the four tags that I just entered and they are in black which means I have not printed them yet. You do have the option up here of selecting all your tags. So if I if I check that button that means I'm going to select all 370 of my tags. I could select all on the page which is 24 tags on a page or I can go in one by one and I'm just going to print these four tags because those are the only ones that need to be printed on my side. It's a good idea when you're ready to print to do it in increments of nine because you're able to print nine tags to the page and that way you will maximize your paper. So for this example, I only have four and I'm gonna print using the PDF option. To print with PDF, you need to have Adobe installed on your computer. It shows you an example. This is what it should look like. The tag should uh, maximize the page. There shouldn't be any space on the page to print all nine and it is going to print portrait. You're printing your tags on white cardstock. That's a heavier bond of paper. You should have your printer setting to best so that the barcode is nice and crisp. And you can see if you want to double check yourself, these three tags are marked donate because there is this circle D and this one is marked full price. You do not need to print your tags in color. You can print black and white on, if you're using a color printer, this will come out in red, but if you wanna conserve your colored ink, it's perfectly fine to print them in black and white. Now I'm just gonna go up here to print. And you can see I'm at 100%. I go to print and it's going to print nine tags to a page.
Our tags are all printed and now we're ready to attach them to our items. So you want to cut them. Again, you can use either a paper cutter or scissors or just perfectly fine as, fine as well. Uh, if for your clothing, the tagging gun may be used and you want to look for the area of the clothing that's going to have the least damage. So generally the size tag is best to stick the needle through that or the thickest part of the armpit is an ideal place for that to go as well. If you don't have a tagging gun, no problem. You want to use safety pins and again, look for an area of the garment where you're not gonna cause damage and use this little icon here as a guide as to where to place your safety pin. For other items like shoes, a hole punch can be used to punch through the tag and then you're gonna attach right through the laces or I could also go through the back of the shoes here. You may put infant shoes like the, the non-walking shoes in a Ziploc bag, that's fine as well. But for the bigger shoes, moms want to see if these are gonna fit on their kiddos' feet so you wanna leave those out of a bag. Moving on to some of our other items. So for DVDs or books, clear packing or painter's tape is a great thing to invest in. It's a good idea to go over the original barcode so there's no interference with scanning and just slap that on to the bottom. Uh, I'm not getting a good job here, but right there, you don't wanna go over any of the details, but you can do that. Um, a little better than I just did. Toys like this little truck, you might wanna put this in a Ziploc bag. Anything that you do put in a Ziploc bag, you wanna take the time to tape the bag shut with clear packing tape. That way little hands can't get into it and it doesn't end up damaged at the sale. Once you do that, you can take your tag and secure it always to the outside of the Ziploc bag so that we can scan it and attach that with clear packing tape as well. Okay, moms, we're almost there. It's time for drop off. So you wanna have all of your stuff sorted by type and then for your clothing by size and by gender. So grab a big plastic tote if you have one or you can grab a corrugated box or trash bag, whatever you need to do to keep your stuff organized. So I'm putting in all my books, keeping them all together. The next thing I'm gonna put in all my DVDs put them in there and the reason why I'm keeping them together is because at the sale you're going to be responsible for putting them out on the sales floor so if you have them all neatly organized you just stop at one spot drop them off and then continue on for your clothing a really time-saving tip is to rubber band all the same size and gender together so these are all my 14 to 16 girls I'm just gonna lay that on top of my tote this is all my boys stuff that's going to go in there too and then of course you want your shoes and your other loose items you can throw them in there if you have tons of clothes which most of our families do you can lay those in the back of your car you will be given a rolling rack at drop off you can wheel that rack out to your car load it up and bring it into the building